a Lorentz transformation is a mathematical way of relating physical quantities that describe objects between two different inertial reference frames while taking into account the special theory of relativity. So, a Lorentz transformation incorporates time dilation and length contraction of our quantities such as time and length. So, basically in this lecture we're going to derive the Lorentz transformation equations that basically allow us to make these relations between two different inertial reference frames. So, let's begin by making the following assumption. Suppose that we have two inertial frames, F and F prime. So, F consists of X axis, Y axis, and Z axis, and F prime consists of X prime axis, Y prime axis, and Z prime axis. Now, the time in frame F is given by T, while the time in frame F prime is given given by t prime. Now we're assuming at time of t equals t prime equals zero seconds, the two frames are superimposed. They are found at the same exact position. So, now let's follow the following five steps that will basically lead us to these Lorentz transformation equations. Let's begin with step one. So, we're assuming the following is true. So, at a time of t equals t prime equals zero, these two frames are exactly superimposed. So, the origin of one frame is found on top of the origin of the second frame. So, the x and x prime lie on the same axis y and y prime and z and z prime also lie on the same axis. However, frame f prime is moving with a velocity of v to the right along the x axis with respect to the stationary frame f. So, after time begins increasing and progressing, basically, one of the frames given by f remains stationary, while the second frame given by f prime begins to move to the right along the x-axis with the velocity given by v. So, this remains stationary and this begins to move. So, basically, we want to find the three equations that will allow us to transform the coordinates from one frame to the other frame. And to do it, we're going to use the equations that we derived in our discussion on Galilean transformations. But now, we're going to take into consideration the fact that time dilation and length contraction takes place. So basically, let's suppose we have some point given by this point in frame f prime. And we want to transform the coordinates that represent this point from this frame back to this frame. To do it, we have to use these equations. But because we're taking into consideration length contraction to actually calculate what x will be, we have to take this and multiplied by some factor that is known as the length contraction constant. Now, usually they use gamma to represent this constant. In my lecture, I'm going to use alpha. So, x is equal to alpha multiplied by x prime plus v multiplied by t prime. So, basically, this point moves from this location, it moves this entire distance, which is given by v times t prime, plus it moves this distance, which is given by x prime. But not only is that taking place, uh, length contraction is also taking place, and that's why we're multiplying that by alpha. Not notice. Now notice that the reference frame is only moving along the x-axis. It's not moving along the y-axis and it's not moving along the z-axis. So that implies the y-coordinate will remain the same and the, and the z-coordinate will also remain the same. So y equals y prime and z equals z prime. 
So, basically, if we know what x prime is, what y prime is, and what z prime is, we can calculate what x, y, and z is. But notice our alpha is some unknown constant. So basically, in the next several steps, we're going to attempt to find what this constant alpha is. So let's move on to step two. So because we're dealing with two inertial reference frames, that means our motion is relative. So movement is relative, which basically means we can also say that F prime is the inertial frame that is stationary, while the frame F is moving with a velocity v to the left along the x-axis. So now we're beginning at this position where these two frames are superimposed and then we're allowing time to progress but now this frame f prime is stationary while the frame f begins to move with the velocity v to the left along the x-axis and basically we follow the same steps and we obtain these equations but now instead of using a positive sign we're using a negative sign because the velocity is moving in the negative direction along the x-axis so once again these equations come from the usage of Galilean transformations that we spoke about in a previous lecture. So, now we see that if we know what x is, what y is, and what z is, so now we're within reference frame f, so let's suppose we know x, y, and z, now we can use these equations to pinpoint exactly what x prime is, y prime, and z prime. But once again, we don't actually know what the alpha is. Alpha is some unknown length contraction constant, and so we want to find what that actually actually is and in steps three and four that's exactly what we're going to do so let's move on to step three so at time of t equals t prime equals zero let's suppose a photon of light a single beam of light leaves the origin of both frames and it travels with a velocity c so the speed of light in a vacuum is given by c now within frame f it travels a distance given by x and that distance is equal to the product of the time that has elapsed in frame f given by t and c the speed of that photon so if we're within frame f the distance the photon travels is x equals c multiplied by t now uh, motion is relative and so that means let's suppose we're instead dealing with f prime so if we're in frame f prime then that means the photon travels a distance of x prime equals c multiplied by t prime where t prime is now our time that has elapsed within uh, the frame f prime so now let's get the following two equations so uh, c multiplied by t so we're dealing with frame f so c multiplied by t is equal to x and x from equation one is equal to alpha multiplied by x prime plus v multiplied by t prime now what exactly is x prime well x prime is equal to c multiplied by t prime so we replace that with c multiplied by t prime and now we have a t prime term here and a t prime term here we can take that out and we get the following equation uh, alpha multiplied by t prime multiplied by c plus v and let's call this equation a now where within frame f prime so within frame f prime the photon travels a distance of c multiplied by t prime and that is equal to x prime which is equal to alpha multiplied by x minus v multiplied by t 
So, once again, we replace x with c multiplied by t as we did in this case. And t appears on both sides, so we can take that out. We get this equation. Let's call this equation b. Let's move on to step 4. In step 4, we're finally going to solve for this alpha unknown. So from equations B, we know if we take equation B, we can basically solve for T prime. So T prime is equal to alpha multiplied by T times C minus V divided by this constant C. So now we have T prime in terms of T, C and V and alpha. So now we substitute this equation into equation A. So equation A states that C multiplied by T is equal to alpha multiplied by T prime. So we take this T prime term and we replace it with this entire equation. So alpha multiplied by this multiplied by C plus V. So now Let's actually rewrite it and let's multiply these out and we get the following result. So t, C multiplied by T is equal to alpha squared times T divided by C multiplied by C squared minus V squared. And now we can finally solve for this alpha and we rearrange and we get the following result. So this unknown that represents the length contraction constant constant by how much our quantity actually contracts is equal to 1 divided by the square root of 1 minus v squared divided by c squared. So now we actually know what our alpha is. So basically these are the three equations that we can use to transform coordinate points between our two inertial reference frames. So for example, since we know what alpha is, and if we know what x prime, y prime, and z prime is, we can convert that point within frame f prime into that point in reference frame f. Now, the last thing that we must find is the relationship between time t within frame f and time t prime in frame f prime. Remember, distance or length is not the only thing that contracts. Time also dilates. So there is a difference between the time that has elapsed within frame f and the time that has elapsed within frame f prime because of the special theory of relativity. And in step 5, that's exactly what we're going to find. We're going to express t, the time in frame f, in terms of t prime, the time in frame f prime. So, let's begin with the following relationship. So we know that x prime is equal to alpha multiplied by x minus v multiplied by t. Now, let's replace x with the following equation. So x is equal to alpha multiplied by x prime plus v multiplied by t prime. And that's exactly what we do in this case. So we have alpha multiplied by alpha multiplied by x prime plus v multiplied by t prime, which comes from this equation, minus v multiplied by t. Now let's actually multiply this out and we get the following result. Then we multiply the alpha out. And now we get x prime is equal to alpha squared multiplied by x prime plus alpha squared multiplied by v times times t prime minus alpha multiplied by v multiplied by t. So now we basically want to solve for t the time in reference frame f. So let's bring this to this side and this to the other side. So alpha multiplied by v multiplied by t is equal to this entire quantity.
So let's continue our derivation from the top. So we have alpha multiplied by V multiplied by T and that is equal to alpha squared times X prime. So we take this term and we bring it to the second term. So minus X prime plus alpha squared times V times T prime. So the reason we brought the X prime term over is because the X appears on this term and this term. So we can take the X prime out. So alpha squared minus 1 times X prime plus alpha squared times V times T prime. So remember the goal is to solve for T in terms of T prime. So let's bring the alpha times V term to the right side by dividing both sides by alpha times V. So T is equal to this quantity divided by alpha times V and this quantity divided by alpha times V. So this becomes alpha multiplied by T prime because the V term will cancel and one of the alphas will cancel as well. So now our goal is to basically take out an alpha from both of these terms. So in order to take out the alpha, this has to square. So we have alpha multiplied by alpha squared minus 1 times x prime divided by alpha squared times v plus well this term we take out and this is simply t prime so now recall what our alpha is. Alpha is equal to 1 divided by the square root of 1 minus v squared divided by c squared. So let's square both sides. So if we square the alpha, we get alpha squared. If we square this side, we get 1 divided by the square root goes away and we have 1 minus v squared divided by c squared. So let's look at the bottom term for just a moment. So let's find the common denominator. So we have c squared minus v squared divided by c squared. That c squared term comes on top. So alpha squared is equal to c squared divided by c squared minus v squared. Now these two alpha terms can be represented in terms of, in terms of c and v. So basically we take these and replace them as shown. So now we have t is equal to alpha multiplied by this quantity minus 1 divided by this quantity times x prime plus t prime. Now this is equal to, well let's, let's find the common denominator here. So we have c squared minus c squared plus v squared divided by c squared minus v squared and this remains as shown. Remember we still have this v term which comes from this v here. So notice that these guys will cancel. Also notice that these will cancel. Now one of these v's will cancel and will have v on top and c squared on the bottom. So v divided by c squared times x prime plus t prime multiplied by alpha. So the time is equal to alpha multiplied by v times x prime divided by c squared plus t prime. So we were able to derive the equation that basically gives us the time in reference frame F with respect to the time t prime in reference frame F prime. So this equation along with these three equations are known as the Lorentz transformation equation.